I can't wait for my next $1,200 stimulus check. The last one didn't go as planned. I was actually supposed to overdose with some Russian girls, and uh, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you guys, I'm still here. And since that's the case, how many dump trucks can I fill with dog shit for $1,200 to dump on the mayor's property? I mean, I'm sure I'll get arrested on the spot while 15 teenagers are busy getting shot to death in Brooklyn. So the media has been pushing this constant illusion, falsifying true unemployment numbers, crime statistics, trying to hide that cities like New York and Los Angeles are becoming third world hellholes, mass exodus, everyone's leaving. It's become apparent this has nothing to do with public safety, nothing to do with keeping businesses afloat. They just want to usher in the new global government. And if it can happen in America, if it can happen in New York City, it can happen anywhere. They are intentionally instilling fear and panic into the public on a daily basis with double speak as well as divide and conquer tactics. Oh, cases are an all time high, but oh, children need to go back in schools. The BLM movement, white versus black, men versus women, young versus old. This is allowing them to intentionally destroy the well being of everyone without causing a revolt especially small businesses. It's been blatantly obvious when people are allowed to go into any corporate restaurant chain and these larger companies can adapt to the circumstances with new marketing, commercials, but as soon as a small business tries to do the exact same thing, they shut them down. They suspend their liquor license. It was okay for 10,000 people to jerk off in Washington Square Park, but 20 people can't have a drink at a bar in Queens. It's okay for Cuomo to shut down restaurants when shootings are skyrocketing, and I can't get a response from the police within an hour to get some crazy contractor out of my business? New York City tallied 47 shootings last week, a 176% spike compared to the 17 the city saw during the same period last year, police sources said Monday. 14 murders are included in that figure, according to the sources. Last year, there were only five murders citywide during that time. The fatal victims include a 16-year-old boy who was shot in the head at a basketball court in George Walker Jr. Park in Cypress Hills around 6.40 p.m. An 18-year-old man who was also shot in the head during the same incident is listed in critical condition at Kings County Hospital Center and another victim, 17, who was struck in the leg was taken to Brookdale University Hospital Medical Center in stable condition. What's absolutely crazy is that he's sending the sheriff, police officers to raid restaurants and arrest restaurant owners, yet on the street, people are killing each other like a bunch of animals. And these are the shootings that they're reporting. I would imagine there's hundreds to thousands that aren't being reported. If they're willing to fake the unemployment numbers to be a quarter of what they actually are, how much are they going to fake crime rates? Something more serious. 176% increase? I would bet it's 10 times what they said. Someone had a good point. Why isn't the BLM movement protesting all of these shootings? They were blocking FDR Drive the other night, impeding traffic of the working class, you know, which makes it very clear what this is about. Divide and conquer, get everyone fighting amongst each other like a bunch of savages. It's been blatantly obvious this BLM movement is completely staged nonsense. Restaurants struggle to stay afloat as Cuomo cracks down on COVID-19 requirements. The congregations in front of bars and restaurants, we believe that's connected to the increase in the number of young people, the infection rate in the number of young people, said Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo says 37 mostly downstate establishments were issued violations by state police and the state liquor authority during compliance sweep Thursday night. Chez Oscar owned Charletta Jansen says restaurants are not getting enough support to take on these new challenges or stay in business. It's so ridiculous and the only reason they must be targeting restaurants is because they're not corporate owned by all of these elite pricks. These restaurants aren't putting money in the hands of the right people so they don't want them to operate. Even the sheep will know what's going on here. What's more risky for getting sick? Getting McDonald's drive through that was touched by half a dozen workers or a restaurant meal that was touched by one or two chefs. We did a video on how vegetables are dirtier than meat and when you think logically, no social activity is justified over another. If people aren't getting sick in supermarkets or McDonald's, then everything should be open. Jansen herself is advocating for help for bed restaurants now, losing out on what's usually the most profitable time of year worried that once vibrant businesses will turn into shuttered storefronts. This is significant. There's different venues that make money at different times of the year. 
you know, I would try to bartend in the Hamptons at a good spot in the summer and then at a nightclub in the city during the winter. You know, that was the ideal. And I'm sure some lucky guys and gals were making well over six figures cash bartending. When I worked at a steakhouse as a waiter, you know, some guys made a few thousand per week in the busier winter months, particularly November and December. And you have these rooftop bars, outside dining areas, summer hotspots that are now hardly getting any business. So they were supposed to make their yearly revenue this summer and they couldn't do that. You know, just in the small time span of two to three months, they need to payroll their entire year. This fall and winter is when hospitality will truly crash because that's when most New York City restaurants are supposed to profit. If this planned nonsense lasts through next fall, as I anticipate, pretty much every summer and winter spot is going to be out of business and the few that stay afloat certainly haven't made money in two years, basically. You know, even the gaslighting modern media is preparing people for what's to come through predictive programming. New York City's elected leaders haven't begun to face its economic and fiscal horrors. The city is in for some truly rough times. Reports last week made clear and the pain may be worse thanks to ongoing denial from Mayor Bill de Blasio and the city council. By last month, the region had experienced more infection, death, and economic destruction than anywhere in the world. As many as a third, or nearly 80,000 of the 230,000 small businesses throughout the five boroughs may never reopen. An 18.3% jobless rate has left up to 1 million households struggling. Only 40% of Manhattan office workers will return by year's end. 25% may never come back, prompting employers to trim space and move jobs out of the city altogether. Gotham's economy is on pace to shrink 7% over two years, sparking huge city and state tax revenue losses. Significant federal aid is essential, but won't be enough to fill the gaps. These politicians, Cuomo, de Blasio, are just fall guys. We know who's in control and making this happen intentionally. Again, those statistics are just what they're willing to tell you. They're saying a third of businesses may never reopen. It's probably 70 to 80%. 18.3% jobless rate we know is well over 50%. Saying 40% of office workers will return and that 25% may never come back is comical because there's no way that nearly half of workers weren't fired. Economy is on pace to shrink 7% over two years. Yeah, try adding a zero to make that 70%. It's just unfortunate, you know. I, I wish I had a few more years to get my farm and business up and running so I could help more people out. You know, maybe we can weather this storm for another year or two and then have a few years to prepare for the full on 2030 craziness that's probably going to be magnitudes wilder than anything we've seen before. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. You know, it's, it's pretty bad if even the modern media is becoming more grim and facing reality. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, you know how to support me down in the description below. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.